Well, hello. My name is Santino, Education Coordinator here at Bowman's Wildflower Preserve. And today, I'd like to talk with you about flowers. A flower is a specific portion of a plant and it has a very special purpose. And that's what I'd like to explore a little bit deeper today. I'm sure that each of you has seen a flower at some point in your life, be it a tulip, dandelion, or a daisy. Here at Bowman's Hill Wildflower Preserve, we focus on native plants, like this wood geranium and its flowers. Now, what's a native plant? It's simply a plant that has existed here in America since before the colonists came. Plants, like most animals, have two main goals. One is to live a long and healthy life to survive, and two, to make more of their kind or reproduce. Similarly to most animals, this requires two puzzle pieces to make it happen. It requires the male portion, or the pollen, and the female portion, the egg. Unlike animals, plants can't walk around to find a partner to reproduce with, so they need to get some help. They develop several strategies for getting these two puzzle pieces of life together, and that's what leads us to a flower's purpose. Let's take a look at some flowers. A flower contains all the reproductive parts of a plant. Flowers can be both complete, as in the example of this flame azalea, having male and female parts on the same flower, or they can be incomplete, where the male and female portions would be on separate flowers. Plants that have only male or only female parts on separate flowers are referred to as dioecious. A plant that has both parts on the same flower or only male and only female flowers on the same plant are referred to as monoecious. Who knew flowers were so complex? Here we see the anther. It contains the pollen of the flower. The anther is typically found on this long, thin stalk called a filament. A filament's role is to raise the anther above the flower and make moving pollen away easier. Pollen is typically moved away from a flower by two main methods. One can be an animal visitor, typically an insect, or the second with wind. In the case of our pinkster azalea, it's typically pollinated by either an insect or a hummingbird. The goal of the plant is to move the pollen from the anther right here, to this part called the stigma. Think of it as the pollen landing pad. If the right pollen makes it to the right stigma, it travels down the tube here called a style, which leads to the eggs down in the ovaries. Yes, plants have eggs. Once a flower's egg has been fertilized, a seed will form and the ovary will develop into a fruit but let's not get ahead of ourselves. As we can see, flowers come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And sometimes we can tell how a flower is to be pollinated based on its size, shape, and color. Some flowers are generalists, meaning they don't care which insect comes to pollinate them. One great example of that is our friend, the wood geranium. As we can see, its reproductive parts are surrounded by petals. And these petals act like a giant flashy billboard, indicating to the insect pollinator that there is nectar and pollen as a reward right here in the center. They can take this flashy billboard to a whole new meaning, though, with ultraviolet light. So we're going to pause for a moment of science. Here, we see the spectrum of light, beginning with AM radio, spanning all the way to gamma rays. Right in the middle, we have what we call the visible light, which is the light that you and I see, which is why we call it visible light. Insect eyes are tuned a little bit differently than ours. They don't see light like we do, spanning with red, going to violet. Instead, their eyes start about here in the yellow range for us and go all the way through ultraviolet rays. You might know ultraviolet rays because you had a sunburn from them when you went outside. So, when it comes to flowers wanting to share a message with insect pollinators, sometimes there's more than meets the eye. And they can use that ultraviolet light to guide the pollination partner right towards the center of the flower. Now here we have a trumpet honeysuckle. It relies on a different pollination partner than our wood geranium, 
As we can see from the color, the red-orange, a color that our insect friends can't see very well, and the long, slender flower means that its pollination partner needs a long, slender mouth part to reach the nectar held at the base of the flower. Can you think of a pollination partner that might have a long, slender mouth part? If you thought hummingbird, you'd be right. The color and the shape of this flower are perfect for attracting these beautiful birds. Lastly, let's take a look at some plants that rely on wind for pollination. As we can see from this black walnut here, the flowers are quite small, almost non-existent. And this makes a lot of sense. This plant has no need for a bright, showy billboard or colorful petals. Instead, it relies on casting millions of grains of pollen into the air and hoping for the best. If you've ever parked under a tree like this in the spring or fall, you might have noticed pollen on your car when you returned. If you suffer from seasonal allergies, like in the fall and ragweed, uh, you might notice this when the pollen flies up your nose, causing an immune response. Your eyes begin to water, your nose starts to run, and the pollen up your nose will make you sneeze. <coughs> the final part of a flower cycle is the development of a fruit. In some instances, such as blueberries or cherries, the fruits are edible and serve as a delicious reward for seed dispersers. In other instances, like with our friend the wood poppy here, the main purpose of the fruit is to serve as protection for the seeds that are developing inside. So remember, the cycle goes anther, pollen, stigma, style, egg, seed, fruit. 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 Okay, I'm done. I want to thank you all for joining me. I hope when it comes to flowers, you've learned that each piece plays an important role and they are more beautiful and complex than first meets the eye. If you want to continue your learning and discover more into the fascinating world of flowers, we'll have an activity book available to you both at the preserve and on our website. Please remember that when you come visit the preserve to bring your activity book with you, as some of those activities are intended to be done on site. Thank you all again and until next time, anthropollen stigma style egg seed fruit, anthropollen stigma style egg seed fruit, anthropollen stigma style egg seed fruit, anthropollen stigma style egg seed fruit.